Goed, boffende kijkers. Hier hebben we een heel speciale gast vanavond. Ira Cohen. Hij leest nu iets uh, uit zijn werk uh, voor, voor jullie. Oké, okay, voor kijkers en spelers. Spelers. Spelers? Spelers. Spelers, ja. Spelers, oké. Okay. Hartstikke luk. Oh. I'm lucky to have a heart. Well. So, uh, you want me to read one or two poems, right? Yeah, so, oké, okay, I'm going to read two. You know, the best thing is to have your notebook with you, and I left my notebook in New York, so I have these other poems, you know, but I'd like to be up to the minute. You, do you know what's happening in the, the United States right now? Well, uh... You know I, about I, the energy crisis is I, a big I, thing? A little bit, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so I, I called, uh, trying to call George Bush, I wrote a letter, open letter to George Bush about how to solve the energy crisis, that all he has to do is turn off the electric chair in right. Texas, <laughs> you know? So uh, we have a lot of different things we can do as poets, you know. I mean, the poet is, uh, they say, uh, what Saint Jean Pierre said, is the conscience, perhaps he even said something like the guilty conscience of his time. Hmm. This poem is called Letter to Caliban. This is my history, New York City, 2001. There are blind spots everywhere. Someone stands on a stage begging for help. What is it eating my vitals? and the vitals of my friends. Selling death is the business of the capitalist state. No longer loves cannot rise above the subway. Looking through the bicycle wheel, one remembers a pyramid. The prophets push up the sewer covers and enter the streets by night. We are crowded into small rooms which cannot contain us. A young mother dreams of wrecking crews, yet the children find the sun, the leaf, the bird, make the tongue rare to fill the space with meaning. In the text, we presuppose keys, hope to find wetness. Once people slept in gardens, now not even photography can get you out of prison. And another poem uh, I'd like to read here is uh, for Roxanne and Marina Tsvetaeva. Marina Tsvetaeva, you know, is the great Russian poet mm. who hanged herself after mm. she came back to the Soviet Union. She could have stayed in Paris, but uh, she followed her family, you know, back to uh, the Soviet Union. Awake in a dark room alone, Downstairs, the goddess of love sleeps, her jewels and makeup in a box till the next performance. Memory dances in the net of illusion. Maha Maya and I, unable to sleep, feel myself less subs substantial, turning into a memory. Perhaps it is better to have the heart of a jackal. I would not come again to lie in a cradle or to know the short wait of earthly love. Asha Pasha, Vinir Mukta, freed from the fetters of hope. Thank you. Hmm. Thanks, Ira. <laughs> Asha Pasha, Vinir Mukta. Ah, ha, ha. Ah, ha, ha. Ah, ha, ha. That was what, that's what Ganesh Baba told me. Aha. Uh -huh. You know, also, so, you know, Peter here also knew Ganesh Baba. That's our first connection. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. We met him at different times and were both uh, very strongly affected by Ganesh Baba, who I remember fondly. In fact, a book of mine which is coming out in New York from the Goody Girls. Uh, uh, it's going to be that? called Panther what? Books. Goody Girls, they're two girls. They like to do what they call the real thing. Ha. Huh. The real McCoy, the whatever, you know. And they are publishing? Yeah, so they are doing a they've done a series of about nine or ten uh, interviews or conversations. Uh, mine was the first one. Also, Debbie Harry, Penny Arcade, uh, uh, Edgar Oliver, Marty Matz. Uh, there are a number of other people. Huh. Uh, Is there any you know, way in the series? Yeah, in you, uh, 197 7th Avenue. Romy, R-O-M-Y, Ashby, A-S-H-B-Y, and uh, $10 uh, advance now will get you a 100-page book of uh, my uh, poems called Poems from the Akashic Record. Aha. Uh -huh. 
Yeah. Well, okay, people really have to be fast to have noted this down. And but, was uh, <laughs> if they want to know more about this, of course, yeah. they can come to the Ruigor hey, Church hey, and course. meet you uh, during your sermons. Or I, after no, I'm not giving a, no, I'm not giving any sermons. That's Are you taking confessions? You, no, I mean, I can take confessions, but I, ha I have to charge for that. Yeah, okay. No, because I understand. don't like to hear confessions no, either, you know. We understand. In, mean, nature, in nature, in nature. Just come as you are. Come as you are. Okay. <laughs> come as you are, party. But Ira, there is a thing that um, I would like to comment, uh, uh, to hear your comment on, and uh -huh. that's uh, there was uh, when we were in the States in 82 with a couple of Dutch poets. Yeah. There was this controversy that uh, there is a difference between performing poets and 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 non-performing poets uh -huh. and uh, actually the, the the poets who don't perform very much but who uh, express themselves in 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 small books uh -huh. that very few people read they considered their poetry superior to the performing poetry uh -huh. Uh, which was supposedly uh, yeah, not worth reading when she would read it and so on. Uh -huh. There was this whole thing going on. Actually, in Holland, I can still see that the official uh, poetry scene is very strongly dominated by these, whatever you call them, academic poets, uh, mm -hmm. uh, aesthetic poets, uh, clever, smart, uh, word jugglers, poets, you know, uh, uh, melancholy. Also by people who have connections uh, to the academies, they publish books in it. Uh, cause yeah, of course, it's a matter of connections They too. give awards to but themselves absolutely. and everything. Yeah, you know, so. but, and then, but there, on the other hand, there's an enormous scene, uh, especially the recent years, of, of living poetry, you know. Well, that's are, always uh, been true. Uh, everywhere and especially in Holland. Yeah, so we are still being dominated by a kind of Rederijkers, uh -huh. which was the, 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 the class, uh, the rich Dutch who were uh, giving uh, Rembrandt and the great painters and writers their, uh, their contracts in the uh -huh. Golden Age. And they but were deciding... I understand deciding that uh, Rembrandt's uh, body was actually uh, dug up after he was buried because uh, of lack of payment of some kind uh, that he was pulled out of his grave. Is that true? You know that's Well, true. I don't know. I know they dug up Pope John the twenty third recently and they found his body uh, wonderfully intact. Uh -huh. after, you oh, know, that's I just read this this yeah, morning. Well he was the but best Rembrandt, Pope. I think was, so. He was the best Pope we so, had in my memory. <laughs> I think so too. But you know Pope that's Pius why he didn't Pope last Pius, very long. Uh, the one uh, who was uh, you know in charge uh, during uh, uh, the uh, Holocaust uh, during the fascist uh, hmm. period spent thirteen years dining in Germany. And then when he died, unlike uh, uh, John the Twenty Third, who was very intact, he exploded in his coffin. Really, giving off an incredibly <laughs> obnoxious <laughs> and foul eructations wow. and gaseous odors. You know, he had always had a bad stomach. You know, he wow. was actually trained as a canon lawyer of uh, huh. of the church. You know, he rather was than very as good a, sources to hear this kind oh, of no, this uh, intimate this, information. No, this is well known. This it's is well, well known and documented. Okay. But, yeah. um, but it, it, well, actually, I, I wanted to ask you, because in my opinion, the beat poets, for instance, but also uh, people like Whitman and, 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 and other great uh, experimental poets, they have made a place in American culture for, yeah, for performing poets, like uh -huh. it did for, for, for rock music, like there's a place which is also not really considered uh, culture in Holland, you know, like it is for well. jazz, which is rated a little bit higher in Holland than pop music but so so because in America I feel there is uh, a lot of respect for people like you like Ginsburg like well like, I wouldn't like, exaggerate uh, no? that aspect uh, you particularly. think it's just a small hey I mean uh, people uh, you know uh, get attention and if they uh, deserve that attention then you can be suspect them actually in yeah. most cases because that's more the way it works and yeah, then yeah, uh, yeah. some people actually, uh, you know, because of this tradition of what you call performing uh, poets, uh, people have cut this and sliced it a lot of different ways, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, it can be enough just to be there reading your poems. I don't think about what I have to do to perform. I realize I'm wearing my Spider-Man mask and uh, some gaily colored purloined uh, glasses, uh, yeah. cheap but effective. Yeah. But you're you a know, real child of our uh, time. Yeah, but, uh, you know... I feel, uh, you know, life is like show business in a way, and I just have try to have a little fun, even though I'm not a girl and I'm not 
Cindy Lauper, but I remember that song. Remember, girls just want to have fun. Yeah. So I feel like that. You know, yeah, I yeah, just yeah, want yeah, to have yeah. fun. Is that true? <laughs> yeah. Why? Because that's what uh, Priestley, the old uh, writer, G. B. Priestley, when he was asked at his 90th birthday uh -huh. if he had any uh, good advice for the coming generations, have he fun. said, enjoy, "Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy life as much as you can." Well, I mean, I've, if I would have done something else as a profession rather than being a poet, I mean, that's a kind of a glib question and answer situation that I think uh, Proust made up in a questionnaire and people are asking this question all the time, uh, you know, in uh, different questionnaires. But I, just thinking at the moment, because we're talking about fun, which is one of my favorite things, you know, uh, so uh, the idea of playing for real and uh, things like that. But also, I would like to have been a funambulist. A funambulist? Yeah. Uh -huh. And where would the fun, which hole would the fun come out? Well, of? I mean, the, the word fun is in there, and, uh, you know, yeah, 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 being yeah. an ambulance just means you're moving around. If you don't move, you might as well consider yourself dead, I mean, to That's some true. degree. And, That's of course, if, uh, that word there actually comes from a Latin word, which is uh, funus, which means rope. Uh -huh. You know, uh -huh. so it's a tightrope walker, tight which, uh, walker, which is actually a chord dancer. Absolutely. Is that what you say in Dutch? A chord dancer, yeah. A chord yeah, dancer, yeah. 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 Well, uh, talking of fun, I think maybe we could round uh, round off this uh, this small conversation with a, the, a very good Amsterdam joke by a great Amsterdam guy, Lou Lap. Yeah, a joke he made up just uh, before he died, as the yeah. legend goes. And it's this very old couple comes to a lawyer, 95 years old, and say, uh, "Sir, we want to have a divorce." Uh -huh. And the lawyer says, but, but uh, sir, madam, you're 95. I mean, this is uh, ridiculous. Why didn't you come before? Yes, we, oh, we already, we want a divorce for 40 years. So why did you wait so long? Yes, we wanted to wait till the children are dead. <laughs> <laughs> that's so that's, yeah, that's the nice thing about Amsterdam, that we still yeah. have these good jokes bubbling up occasionally. Like what do you think of people <laughs> who make jokes? Huh? People who, who well, find uh, out jokes, who create jokes. Oh, who Isn't create that a, jokes? That's the, a very the secret good thing poets, to do. Yeah, the secret that's a, saints. That's a kind of an illumination, actually, yeah. a good joke when the, it comes. That one about the elect turning off the electric chair. You thought so, it. Yeah, you that, made it. Yeah, wow. and then, then <laughs> see, I, realized, I realized that if I could do that more regularly, because I do crack a lot of jokes, and I like to yeah. make... You know, yeah. when they come out of that same space that poetry comes, right, right. is the best rather than it's telling the, it's a the joke. It's the hammer of Thor. Yeah, I don't, I don't care too much for telling jokes I've uh, picked up somewhere else, someone else's joke. If it's really well, good, of course, yeah, it yeah, yeah. deserves repeating. But So uh, you are one of those secret joke makers of the planet. Well, I think it's a kind of a, a special illumination that yeah, comes uh, in humor, uh, yeah. obviously. Well, actually, it's like writing a poem. It's, it could be, uh, you can incorporate a lot of lines like that into poems. I uh, do that sure, sure, from time sure, to time. Sure, sure. And you, are, you have a satirical <laughs> side to your work anyway, I think. Yeah. Satire is there. That's definitely true. Both in true. your uh, personal life and in your uh, writing. It's an undertone. Yeah. And, um, well, was there anything else that we would have to talk about in front of Besides all these people? Satiriasis. <laughs> right. <laughs> Okay, you, folks. You could, you could be a satyr if I would. If I would do, yeah. Well, I would do a, a little. Uh, we could do a little video thing and just call it the satyr. I would prefer you know? to be the nymph. The satyr. Yes, you want I, to be the, the nymph. nymph. And you're but the that's, satyr. Okay? That proves that you're a satyr. You know. Yeah. Because the oh, satyr sure. wants to be a nymph, and the nymph, you know, wants to uh, dildo. To be satirized. To, to dildo uh, little boys. You know. I don't know. Acha, acha. Well, we should ask Eddie Woods about that. That's I think. Right. Well, I think. Uh, <laughs> okay. He, 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 uh, he comes on like he knows more than he does, I think. <laughs> Don't insult him all the time. No, no, I just, I'm just saying he isn't, you know, he isn't somebody who's, uh, you know, out there all the time doing those things. No, no, absolutely not. He has not. A, an active fantasy, which and is... And he's a, a great thing. family man as well. Is he really? Yeah, yeah, yeah see. He's living with, a, with a, his beloved with three uh -huh. kids and uh, in the middle of the meadows, so there's nothing else he can do. Yeah. So that's beautiful. All right, okay. that's enough. Anyway, it's great to talk to you and to see you, Hans. It's fantastic. Welcome, Ira. Okay. En als jullie dus meer van deze wonderbaarlijke beat poet, als je het zo mag noemen, een mysticus ontdekkingsreiziger willen weten. Beat but not beaten. Aha. Shaken but not stirred. <laughs> Public uh, intellectual and private barbarian, <laughs> as he said. Um, in de kerk in Ruigoort, zaterdagavond aanstaande en misschien ook zondag nog wel. I would stick my head in a printing press 
and you could read tomorrow's paper today. Extra, extra. On the Poesy Festival, there's a wonderful poetry. It signifies the corruption which is always at work. The death's head appearing in the flat. Dames en heren, jullie aandacht voor Peter Lamborn Wilson. Uh, I'll read a couple of uh, sonnets about weather, okay? The first one is called Cheap Weather. Money, like nature, lacks the personal touch. The landlord or the worm, dead is dead. The social Darwinists were right, but none survived. War declared, but only in your head. Last bit of wilderness that can't be mapped, the monster from the id, the perfect storm. Stay tuned for the Manichaean weather report, the nihilism of the easily bored. Après moi, le déluge, live at five. Go take the dog for its shot of Novocaine. Les neiges d'antan, okay, but who expected a future with fucking hurricanes? Short-term memory loss at easy rates. Under the skin of the world, one suffocates. Want another one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Global warming. These are all poems about weather. Uh -huh. Global warming. Cling to winter. Don't let winter go. From gelid woods where time is running slow. Discolored porcelain shards of rotten ice. The archaeological remnants of the snow. I dream I'm one of a gang of selfish giants hoarding up all narratives like nuts and port. What prince of spring could resist this frozen garden, boarded up like some bankrupt Nordic resort? Perhaps we should spend our summers in Patagonia, Antarctic whalers lost in the seventh climb, in insulated igloos, musty with sleep, away from the migraine pulse of vacated time. Exiled till autumn, wanderers and rovers, and not come back till Club Med freezes over. Wonderful, Peter. Yeah? Yeah. Um, okay, just one more? Yeah. It's sort of a trio here. This one is called 1911. Uh, the uh, Franklin that I'm referring to is, of course, Benjamin Franklin, mm. okay, who invented electricity mm. or discovered it, they say, by flying a kite. Do you all know this story here in Holland? Flying the kite and the lightning hits the kite and he, he discovers electricity? Yeah. Okay. That devil Franklin with his bloody kite, money begets money. Electricity snatches mourning from night's dignity and Sully's air with Muzak and with light, L-I-T-E. Darkness means darkness. Where to find an island out of the drift of synthetic fearlessness, O oh Malarmé, velvet studded with earnestness and naive planets and stars like Dorsky's sand? Let's run out of gasoline. Let's not stay in touch unless we can be in touch, darkness to flesh, unless we can smell each other in the dark. Oh, 1911, we don't ask for much. Complexity is cheap. Fall into the mesh of stars like a spent fireworks fading arc. I would stick my head in a printing press.